camera on. Hellers. Hey. <clears throat> in the saddle again oh yeah nice i'm not seeing any video from anyone with me we're not, we're seeing, not seeing you, you. Oh, that's odd peculiar queer I think I'll get my uh I think I'll get my dinner when I ask for it from now on. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I said I wanted to eat at 3 30. Uh-huh. I don't want to say this loud because there'll be tears. I said 3 <laughs> 30. Uh, <clears throat> quarter to four, it's not done. And then uh so then I'm eating a little fast and then I just threw up <clears throat> loud enough. <clears throat> <clears throat> then I'll get served at three thirty if I say three three thirty. It's like three. That that's when the the a good if you're saying uh, like you're you have a caterer, and you say like uh, the orders three thirty. Uh. <laughs> they're out of the oven at three twenty five, <laughs> not a quarter to four. Anyway, <laughs> so. I don't know. I mean, it could be the chemotherapy, but it could be that I just tried to eat uh, cocktail wieners at a fast pace when I haven't really eaten a lot today. Yeah. <clears throat> could be that. Like, I went from uh, zero to uh, fucking, uh, I'm trying, I can't think of the name of the hot dog eater. Joey Chitwood. American Joey Chitwood. Chestnut. Chestnut. Joey Chestnut. <laughs> American Chestnut. legend, Jerry Chitwood. <laughs> I love how Andy just, just goes, I, I'm kind of close so i'm just gonna throw it out there yeah well i could come up with the chip part so well that's the wrong part yeah (laughs) both both parts were wrong yeah and really uh, uh, three mini wieners doesn't doesn't uh, put me in into the goat category uh anyway let's keep that quiet (laughs) yeah 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 i mean you always could, you know. You know, but I mean, your, I think this yourself is, something to eat. Right. Oh, that's sure. a possibility that's, also. That's what I wanted to do. That's like. I, I mean, if you're only going for uh, for Vienna sausages, there's not much prep time. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I said. Like, you know, if you're down at, at let's go three thirty, then. <laughs> you know, like I think in the, uh, the Jehovah Witness religion, I think they want men to be men. <laughs> so you're taking full advantage I, that's why i said 3 30 not around <laughs> you know really it's the only thing you can do because to not respect that would be to not respect her religion so right <clears throat> that's why i didn't acknowledge her, her birthday or uh <laughs> hey, I got a I got a gift that it was a replacement or something that broke around here and I didn't present it as a gift. Just like here it is, here's another one. <laughs> uh, I, can't tell if, I can't tell if my voice is out or I'm just saying shitty stuff. So I'm yeah, are you gonna talk in subdued tones the whole time, or uh, I might be. I just re- I just retched and that sort of made my throat a little oh. unsteady. Yeah. <clears throat> I think we should all talk real quiet, like someone's yes. gonna overhear us. And yeah, someone. At us. Yeah. <laughs> Could be sneaking in at any minute. It might have been the many quiches. It's like what? Joey Chesternut, he don't mix it when he's eating, <laughs> when he's, <laughs> when he's ramming dogs, he doesn't take a break and have like a a small quiche. And that's what you did? Yeah. So I was like, I took the allotted time I had to eat, and then I divided that in half because I needed to vomit. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> did you, you back... finish eating after you vomited? That's I, fin- I finished. Well, I ate, and then I, I was like, eh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, there's, I don't. Uh, if I learned anything about having cancer is don't hang on to vomit. <laughs> <Just let> it... 
It's good. It's man. not embarrassing. It's like, yeah, I think that's like, a solid rule. You know, you get over the embarrassment of vomiting anyway. So, but this was, you know, this was good, perfectly timed. When I uh, when I threw up on a, a, <clears throat> a foreman's shoes, I timed it perfectly. <clears throat> this was pretty good because it's like <clears throat> I don't want to complain or anything. <laughs> Somebody... it's, 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 Were you able? To... Podcast is for. Yeah, <laughs> you able to keep a straight face when you said the "I don't want to complain or anything" part. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> this is why I said three thirty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, uh, I don't want to eat like my friend the squirrel, and I've been trying to talk to him about it too, because I got a, a upper deck squirrel. Shows up, and then I give him a handful of nuts because I don't want to go out a bunch or whatever. It's like here, have like six. Okay, go run and bury one. That's cool. But then there's like this, just fucking. I don't know. I eat. I eat the same way. So we're both working on it together. It's like slow down, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey squirrel, what if you had like half of the stomach range? <laughs> think about it you're eating that nut like it's the last one you're gonna get <clears throat> and he knows he shows up i'll give him nuts <laughs> but yeah that's yeah. what i had to do yeah. i was like i got my nuts and then i had 15 minutes <laughs> you know i was like i like the i like i can't be eating wieners up till the time we go <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you don't think maybe it might be what you were eating and not yeah, well, I had I had a one day I had a sensible lunch, I think. Oh no, I didn't. <clears throat> the place I wanted to oh, wait, eat the at the opposite of sensible. <laughs> uh, yeah, Hawaiian thing on a bun. A Hawaiian Let's, thing on a bun, a pineapple. Like, well, like, <laughs> it, was, it was like candy? it was like a loose, Samoan loose pork. <laughs> And it wasn't the it wasn't what I want. The place I wanted to go to chose to not be open today. <laughs> dicks so i went to this hawaiian place and like a like people, a plate lunch place hawaiian yeah plate lunch? yeah but it's a oh, drive through okay so I'm, i've been having this vomit I've, I've been working on it for a bit <clears throat> but that was a good sandwich because me and my dog bonded over it <laughs> so i'm not taking her in the car as much or whatever and we don't do the here we go you get a handout situation much but this Loose pork had sunk into the bun so much that I needed a dog to separate the bread and the meat. <laughs> like maybe you guys you, worked as a team. I gave her. I go. You see if you can lick this off of there because I was having trouble. To like I don't know. I, I, I know it's drive through and uh, and then I but I parked like but, within minutes. But to have a little so it should have been at its best. But if you don't like bread and you don't like the bun why would you get a loose pork it was it was a panic order <laughs> Good really mean, Hawaiian? yeah <laughs> <laughs> i should have got just well, i mean hello or goodbye i can't remember <laughs> yeah not on bread it's fucking horrible though it's just yeah see, so. that, that's the beauty of i'll just like i'll give you a tip the, the beauty of the hawaiian plate lunch is you you went way off script with a sandwich. You, I didn't even know it was a sandwich. Macaroni salad, rice. It looks like Kahlua pork, and then maybe some uh, some really overdone chicken or maybe a teriyaki thing. There's no bread to be seen. This is your fucking mecca, dude. Mm -hmm. And this wasn't even like that sweet Hawaiian bread. <clears throat> it's just a big. That, that Hawaiian fat. bread's not Hawaiian. I know. <laughs> it's just a fucking. It was a. a, a I mean, you know, like I said, it was good for my dog. I said, you know, here we go. This is what you've been waiting for. <laughs> you've been waiting for me to fuck up, and I fuck yeah, up. It was, I, I can't do this. So I guess well, today's the day. <laughs> so I guess I should have allotted myself more than a fifteen-minute window for dinner. Yeah, I did. I allotted myself a half hour, actually. That's the complaint. I got cut 15. But yeah, I said, I get, God damn it. I want, you know, I don't want hospital food, but I want it as an exit in there. 
that I can look at and go, okay, okay, that's about what I should eat. Yeah, well, maybe you should just have a little something to snack on before the podcast, and then you can have actual dinner when the podcast is over. Yeah. I just going to watch Better Call Saul. <laughs> No, it, it interrupts his TV schedule. I don't like to watch dramas when I'm eating. <laughs> you know, if you recorded yourself eating and throwing up, you could just use it like Patreon content, uh, yeah. extra footage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, I mean, that's like a, uh, a fans only. Yeah. yeah. That's like only real. In. Some people, if you're, if you're into it's watching. Andy's starting a new one. <clears throat> fans yeah. Only. Yeah. Hey. He puts clothes on. Hey, I'm going to be <laughs> vomiting in a clear bag in a bit. Now, you guys head over to OnlyFans. Check out, see what the contents of my see stomach will be. See what I got from the Hawaiian place. I think almost anything mixed with chemotherapy could be bad, but Hawaiian food? I'm sure. Like, probably a rough one. But all yeah. I wanted was uh, the sushi place does rice. Terry like a teriyaki bowl and they put a piece of seared fish on it that's what i wanted and instead i got some goddamn <laughs> a hawaiian sandwich like, like a, a fucking shot fired at a tourist <laughs> <laughs> the fuck out of here hallie uh, you ordered the fucking sandwich that doesn't exist yeah that's the that's the <clears throat> that's the tip off uh, <laughs> no one ever orders a, a sandwich at a hawaiian joint yeah, I didn't they even do, know. They go, get the fuck out. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe it wasn't at my, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't remember it being a sandwich. Well, like, I, didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't think that's what I ordered. I thought what I ordered was pulled pork and then it would somehow be on rice. <laughs> <laughs> no mention of rice was made. There was mention of macaroni salad, which I did notice that's, in the toilet. That's right behind me. Your order is right behind me. If it didn't look like that, you go, oh, I'm sorry, uh, sir, you uh, gave me the wrong order. Yeah, but by then, see, here's the thing about a Hawaiian drive through place is people don't mind hanging out and just parking. So it's like you got like time, bro. somebody, yeah, you get there and you can order like for five people or whatever. And then you just, you know, fucking shut down the truck or whatever or leave it running if it's extra loud. <laughs> Uh, you know, you got your whole work crew in the truck. I see. Here's an unwritten deal I have with society. I get food at 11 and I'll eat it later. You pig fucks can eat <laughs> <laughs> after 1130. You can pull in there. You can get your lunch well ahead of time. You know, if you're going to eat it right in the car, you know, or whatever, but don't, don't go clogging it up. It's like, a uh, special needs people <laughs> go in there they know it's like the smart you go i don't want i don't want to mess with the breakfast crowd uh and and then <clears throat> i don't want to fuck with the lunchies you know the lunchies are there you know it's like oh oh you, you're just driving around like a, a fucking hamster in a wheel just driving around and then it, you, you look at your watch and it says noon and then you just hit whatever fucking uh place or whatever you know, <laughs> some people, some people put thought in it. And hey, man, hey, sushi place. I appreciate you this guys. Is your argument that you are one of those people who puts thought in it based on the. Yeah, I won't. I won't mess with trying to places. explain that, but I, it's not coming yeah. across. You see people, they just bang into those places like it's an emergency. And I won't go. I, look, my window of opportunity for lunch is 11 to 1130. If I'm not, if it's not sitting beside me, I'm probably, you know, not eating much. <laughs> so where, where did this go wrong? I don't understand. The if you, fucking if you definitely planned out to hit a lunch place, it's called Hawaiian mm -hmm. plate lunch. If you no. plan to hit a Hawaiian plate lunch well yeah. before 1130, you should have no problem. I've, I've scrutinized that place several times and pulled out. <laughs> I saw someone else do it and I was sitting there with my shit. And then this guy was went in and he come back around and it's a real awkward, you know, it's like driving through a trailer park, not a, a drive through. But then this guy come around and he's like, that, you know, was this guy going to fucking jack me for my order? Because I'm more <laughs> than willing to, you know, to hand it off. Because oh. uh, at this point, my dog knew I was, you know, she could he, she could tell I make, I guess, noises of displeasure. 
<laughs> yeah, like ah, Jesus Christ or whatever. And the dog knew that this, Sweet. like you know, sometimes I'll say, "Hey, I got you know, salivating." You know, <laughs> if you, you know, if everything goes good, you'll have a little bit. This, I didn't say anything like that. I just like, yeah. And I, in fact, I, you know, and if I were, no, I'm gonna just man law this and keep it to myself. But I could go downstairs and say thank you because what I ate for lunch, I'm I regret, and having to eat in such a short window of time before doing an, a national presentation. <laughs> <laughs> feel, hey everybody, welcome to issues with Andy. Yeah, I feel like a, it's like a you know, national presentation. National. That's right. Like some would say international, guys. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I looked at the numbers. Hey man, just the other day I was sending stickers overseas. <laughs> it's amazing how that internet works, man. <laughs> I'm glad Chad's back in the uh, in the frozen weed business. I got <clears throat> this in the mail two hours ago. It's been in the freezer <laughs> just long enough for me to break it out, so I'm extremely happy. Yeah. Thanks to our friends at Free Pipe <clears throat> for coming through. Is, is two hours plenty of time to uh, to freeze that uh, that chamber up there? Definitely. It's uh, see the little bubble doesn't move. It's solid right now. Nice. So this one <clears throat> going to be a little more. Well, what I'm doing use. is so here's the thing. <laughs> now is that uh, I'm gently placing it together, holding it with my thumb, taking a hit. And then taking it back apart, I think setting it down with that yeah. joint it is. is what caused mine to snap it's right over there. time. Just mm -hmm. keeps. Yes, I use it too much. Like I said, yeah, um, seems like a, a, a that a, head right there. I just emailed customer support today because I found that head uh, so that I can use it just like a regular pipe all day, so I don't have to use you know use a bubbler sometimes, and then my. Because I smoke way too much. Nah, <laughs> kind of a convertible one. You, if you you want to wear shorts or you want to wear pants, you just zip off the pants and. All you know. I would need is that head right there, so yeah. it'll fit on here. Cancer should tell you when you smoke too much, and I I, I ain't got it from that. <laughs> it seems, hey, hey, uh, Chad. It seems like uh, like if there was a cradle, you could put it in. That would you know mm -hmm. with points yeah. to hold it. You know, Support so that it, it wouldn't be stressed in, in that one connection like, point. It's yeah, like you need a, a wonder twin it, thing. Frozen yeah. pipe, something to hold it. The other yeah. wonder twin could be form of a pipe holder. A wood, <laughs> little, like, a, you know, a, a freezer Ice bracket. Pipe. Uh -huh. Ice bracket. Uh, that brings up a good point. Uh, the <laughs> box that it came in might have some kind of a, a vacuum well, form uh, uh, holder. Because it, it certainly completely... got to you in shape. It comes completely stowed in to a thing. Just keep it in that. Yeah. It's not very stylish looking. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I keep it in the freezer when I'm not using it. This I is like just it. like when I set it down right. while I'm using while it. Using. That The way that it the bubbler sets, it creates right. that stress point, even with the clip on there. I would say if somebody just got home from work and, you know, smoked, you know, break it out and mm. smoke and then put it back away in the freezer and stuff, it would be fine. But I'm trying to smoke it like a regular pipe 30 times a fucking day from <laughs> five in the morning, <laughs> you know. You're, you're a, a super user. Yeah. 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 Uh, influencer. <clears throat> Are you in Coachella this year? Is that where your booth is? <laughs> I guess, I guess Elfman kicked some ass there. Danny Elfman from Oingo Danny Oingo? Elfman, yeah, Coachella. Yeah. He he killed it, and he was shirtless, and he's in better shape than, uh, well, Axel. Oh, I'm just thinking of other redheads, but Axel Rose, he's in better shape than. Uh, but all, he was pretty buff, and he's like 67, and they uh, kicked did a cool set list. I wasn't there. I'm just in the know. <laughs> I'm not at Coachella, but I could totally stream it on Peacock if I wanted to. Uh, I just don't like going over there. Yeah. To Peacock, not really Coachella. I've never been to Coachella, but. <laughs> uh, 
<clears throat> it's too easy. I think they gave it to me too. I don't think I paid for it, so I don't. I think, them. Uh, yeah, I think Run the Jewels was there yesterday. I would have, I would have watched that. They're doing it where they do uh, two weekends, right? Yeah, they, it's always been that way, I think. Oh, move your head, Shelly. You can go, well, you see yeah, this arm, you go, yeah. wow, look at him. And then you go, okay, he is 67. Yeah, uh, that's not uh, bad. Uh, yeah, but still, look at that. I mean, you know, he's... Uh, well, he hasn't been on the road for years. Michael mm-hmm. Blanco quit, and they were doing annual shows mm-hmm. on Halloween. And he's just been, you know, making music for movies and soundtrack and, and so mm-hmm. he doesn't he doesn't have the road miles that uh, Mick Jagger he, or Richard has. I was thinking, I know, yeah. He kind of transcended being a rock star a bit. Uh, yeah, multi-millionaire uh, uh, music yeah. store. Yeah, he's doing all right. <laughs> Better, you know, him and Brian Adams, I don't know. I'd say I'd, be, I'd rather be Danny Elfman. Yeah. He probably ain't got a collection of panties thrown at him. (laughs) (laughs) Like Brian does? Oh, sure. Yeah, Brian Adams. I think at this point, Brian's probably getting drawers. Yeah, he's getting some with shit in the back. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you don't know if it's a compliment or someone just made a mistake or uh, someone has a commentary on your uh, your rock band. Music now it's commentary a on your lack of breaks during your concert. Yeah, but it could be, you know, like if you heard a, you know, what's that guy? Uh, uh, it's not unusual. That guy, everybody used to throw. Tom throw your, Jones. Tom Jones. If you're the Tom Jones, you know, it's okay to take off your lady diaper and chuck it at him. He gets it. <laughs> he gets it. You, you know, you want to go out in public and, and be able to laugh and sneeze without fear of wetting yourself. So. <laughs> <laughs> he should do an ad for that. It's not unusual, and then have old women chucking their dirty diapers up at him. <laughs> He's probably trying to move away from that. <clears throat> I saw actually. I didn't see Tom Jones, but he did a concert in Eugene, and I just rode my bike and listened. And uh, it was a real lackluster turnout. Not, you know, I guess kiss, I don't know, uh, whatever. It, was, it just was not a good uh, turnout. And he did a, a song and then uh, he he got, like, he come up and he didn't really get an encore. It felt like, you know, like they were, that was what he, you know, like, hey, man, I'm going to, you know. And then, so he did one more song. And then I was, I, I hit the road and I was on my bike and his bus went by. <laughs> like, the bu- his fucking his boss man like the, he 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 started that song so they didn't give him an encore and then he uh i think uh, uh i forget what song he even wrapped up with but uh i was i was pedaling out uh, and it went by fast <laughs> like, he must have hit hit the closing notes of that song on the bus while it was moving <laughs> <laughs> respect him for that you know like yeah. That's a, oh, yeah. get at you know he wanted to beat the he won, and it wasn't because there was going to be a big crowd of people leaving it was like that episode of south park when all the old people drive at once uh-huh. <laughs> tom jones knew his audience hitting the road all at once and if that bus got stuck in there he was yeah. going to be there a while so he was like well, Fuck him, let's go certainly been some stanhope shows where it was shaley pull the suburban up to the side door that's yeah running yeah, the only downfall is when uh, everyone else doesn't follow the directions to get to the fucking. <laughs> they don't end up standing yeah. in the front going, "Where's I've Bingo?" I've been guilty of that before. Yeah, I've been the "Where's Bingo" person myself. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Medford. Medford. Or two. Yeah, Medford. Uh, Doug was Doug was real sk- skittish after. Did he have, just have surgery or the crowd? <laughs> Something got him skittish. And he climbed up. He had a hernia surgery. Well, the the club was like a like an after hours club. We walk in there, and I see there's like bean bags in the front row. And I turn around and go, Doug, just walk out of here. Just I'll take care of this. Just don't <laughs> don't come yeah. in here because this is not a good way to start this after. Go get some sushi. He... And then at the end, <laughs> at, at the end, it was uh, there was a table blocking the door so no one could walk into the right, which was this makeshift stage was. So when he was done, he just did a Starsky and Hutch across the hood, <laughs> across that table, 
and then went out and then buried down in the van and I'm all perfect. And then I instructed uh, Bingo and, and Andy, when Doug's getting ready, we're going to bolt out of there. You guys be in the car. I get paid. I get out to the car and Doug's hunkered down and I'm like, where the fuck are they? And they went in back of the venue. <laughs> so I not only had to go back in the venue, I had to go through the entire venue to the back <laughs> smoking area where they're like, hey, when are we leaving? And I had to ditch a tail. I just like, but where are you? Where's the after party? Come on, man. <clears throat> That's how you ditched me. them. You said, "Come on." I know. This was. I remember this. I remember. Yeah, because nobody can follow me. That's like true. That. I mean, like that. Like a, I one time. One time in Boise, Idaho. I think it was a. It could have been a long-haired Mexican, but I think it was an Indian, and he. He was drunk, and then he, I think he wanted to ask me for money, and I didn't. I didn't say anything. I just kept walking, and then he was following me. Like I thought, okay, man, here we go. And uh, and he didn't. He didn't rob me, but I felt like if I would have been more laid back or cooperative or you know slow, I could have been robbed. You know, <laughs> like what he was. I said, and then all of a sudden you're following me. You know, but I knew. I didn't have but anything. I'm confused. Is this the guy that you told to follow you for the after well, hours? I'm just saying. I know. I know because I had a, a what I felt was a Native American trying to rob me, and I shook him. So <laughs> I can shake any. You know, it's all about throwing off the dogs or whatever. Like you know, follow follow me means I'm gonna Irish goodbye you in a block and a half. Or you're gonna ditch or, the tail. Or you might have cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to determine that before you get I'm, to the corner. I corn. have a half a block. It's like having 15 minutes to eat five hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got a block and a half to break out, or I'm ditching him. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but I remember Doug at the beginning of that show. We walked in, and there's a guy. It was it was like a wine drinking crowd, and there were there was a guy playing like, the, like you Street know, performer wasn't it? Well, he yeah, but he was shined up, and he was he the song that he finished with I think was Dog of the Bay. Yeah, and Doug, you got to go shit on this, and like that you know sometimes I go like how much time do I have to do, or what you know like I get confused or whatever, but I've never had a more clear directive on how to proceed ahead with a show. I was to ruin the mood that that guy would established, which is like, okay, I can do that. And, hey, if I if I get done early, can I punch out? <laughs> you can leave as soon as you've ruined the mood. <laughs> which, yeah, I did pretty quickly, but... Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's like a yeah. Nate that tune uh, thing for Andy. <laughs> I could ruin the mood in three jokes. Yeah, I can just get up there and, you know, do it. <laughs> hey, Andy, was it called the Whiskey Room? I, it might have been. It, I just remember it was daylight, yeah. and there was a big glass window that glass Stanhope window, tried yeah. to climb, and he had just gotten, had a hernia, or, or however they do those. They put them in. Do you get them installed? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah next hernia. But he climbed. He climbed a window and then he locked up and he couldn't get down. It's like, like eh. it's like a commercial. It's like I've fallen and I can't get up. But he climbed and he couldn't get down. So you couldn't use it for a pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my birth mom was at that show. What? My birth mom. Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh man. I hope she it was everything music. I could do to to keep Stanhope away from her because I was just like eh, just let's just get through this and get on the road. We don't need to have twenty questions with uh, Shaley's birth mom. And, <laughs> yeah, you know what birth she mom should be like. on the podcast. Yeah. Doug trying to pull some shenanigans. I mean, yeah, hey, just... let's go get uh, Shaley's birth mom a fuchsia basket and some <laughs> chocolates. <laughs> I'm guessing with a phrase like birth mom, it's not like real <laughs> tight. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to smoke the old fashioned way. Yeah. Well, we'll be hearing you cough since you're not. Yeah, using I know. That's a, I get at a week. I, you know, this is a good, like, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to maybe use this in my post. If I survive or whatever, I'll go. 
I, I can't really do much talking today. I had chemotherapy and I got to do a bunch of speech spiel later <laughs> or whatever. You're saving I mean, your voice for your performance. Your right, international uh, presentation. Right, because I'd like to get down in the kitchen and make hot tea, but somebody's down there in the panic trying to get hors d'oeuvres that were supposed to be done 15 minutes ago. So I had it all plotted out. Andy, can't you just get if you? I mean, I understand. Like you want you want to get like a hot tea when you want to get a hot tea. Can't you just get like one of those little pots that you just set on the base and it like makes hot water in like in like mm-hmm. three minutes? Yeah, but everything with me is a fire hazard. Yeah, well. At, at three minutes before we started this podcast, I poured some water into this mug, hit uh, it 245 it. on the microwave, and then threw the tea bag in and ran up here and hit call. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't even need, Andy, you wouldn't even need it. I, I mean, I, I think I'm explaining something to solve a problem that is not does not want to be solved. Yeah, well, when there's tension in the kitchen, it only it's only that's what you know, that's what I'm saying. You yeah. can solve this thing by not even going downstairs. Well, I know, but I I go down to see when my snacks were ready. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, God, damn it! I love you. <laughs> I don't see like you know they should write they should talk about this in their meeting like how do how do we do this better? <laughs> <laughs> they don't hear that. It's like you know they just laugh and talk about the end times or whatever. They should be saying you know speaking of end times, I was 15 minutes late for my <laughs> husband's snack right before he went off international. <laughs> and uh, and uh, you know it's like well. Oh, Jeho- oh, Jehovah, you know, he'd be like, eh, I had I had him Zoom. I had to get on this Yelp, Skype thing at 15. <laughs> <laughs> Jehovah ain't good at this shit. Oh. <laughs> I bet he ain't, you know. Je- you think Jehovah's good on a computer? I bet he's like, shit, man. I was back before coding. Yeah. <clears throat> he's probably got to have one of the younger apostles help him. Oh, well, that's hot. <laughs> Christian Christianity, as it turns out, is just a big front for homosexuality. They just couldn't take it, so they broke off. It was a schism. Back in the day, there was yeah. two preachers, and the preachers had a difference of opinion, and the church saw them with their dicks touching each other's dick. <laughs> and that was the first schism in that church. There was people in the church who go, wait, we want to be homosexuals. And the others like, no, we got to keep it secret and be homosexuals. <clears throat> so so that's that's... Catholics and Lutherans. <laughs> right. And then it just <laughs> branched off a bunch from there. <laughs> uh, till you get your till you get your snack 15 you, minutes later. Have you, and... have you seen the new uh, Tucker Carlson uh, uh, promo that's been floating around Twitter for the last couple of days? Yeah, yeah, the whole uh, part super, of the super gay uh, man, it, stud man video. Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah, cr- you know, Christ- Christianity needs to be more shirtless. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's like a man aren't, re- you know, I remember uh, a sign outside a porn store I went in and jerked off in just to show support to a local business owner because there was a, a protest out there. And yeah, you gotta support the-, the mom and pops. That's yeah, yeah. It wasn't even going there. I was going to the Denny's next door. But I figured, one, I'm going to drop off some slop in honor of a local businessman because <laughs> he has a he has a small protest gathering out there on a, like a Tuesday morning, and one and one of the guys had a sign that said, "Real men don't use porn." I'm like, oh, all right, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyway, but I, I doubt whether he was really, you know, like like that was his, you know, his real stance. It was a <clears throat> real man. Is this the one use... you're talking about? Well, but it's like, yeah. Yeah, you know, why would you care if, a, you know, like to, if a dude's going to go hit his hit his hog in a little closet and you're just driving by and that bothers you, you want to be in there somehow, you know, you're you're interested. Yeah. If it were a mini series, you'd be watching it. If it were, you know, pay per view, you'd, you know, Patreon membership, 
<laughs> fans only. Yeah, fans only with vomiting privileges. <laughs> you know, whatever I kick into a bag. But yeah, it's like men aren't men enough, and you know, it's we're, yeah. we're pussies, and we need to get more in touch with all that. All leads to fucking fuck, fuckery. Uh, I've seen it, man. It happened. It, yeah, buggery. Uh, but adult. It happened in my yard. I'm pretty sure in uh, uh, Promise Keeper. Uh, the Promise Keepers were uh, coming to Otson Stadium, and my brother John <clears throat> came with some other pilgrims, and uh, and they camped in my yard. All these different tents and stuff. And then later on, I hear, like years later, I hear. The whole movement falls apart, but that was a lot of it. Is there were <clears throat> dudes getting together, talking about the role of women, and then hugging it out. I mean, <laughs> come on, it's like you know, 5 a.m. at the desert party for long enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, things are gonna go wrong, and it went wrong, but it went right, you know. By wrong, it went up each other's assholes. <laughs> And, you know, and that bummed them out. You know, they took that home to their wives when they should have just said, bitch, don't even ask me about the conference and have my snacks ready at 3.30. Um, uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there was some buggery going on in my yard. Uh, I let like 15 Christian Christian dudes camp there, and I didn't have any rules. So I got to get my cat down. He's going to make a leap. And who's making the noise? Yeah, I thought he's... it was a child somewhere. I'm checking my security camera outside, going, "What the <laughs> fuck is going on?" This is his. This is my hospice patient. <laughs> it goes both ways. Yeah, we talk about death every morning when we wake up. It's like a blue song. Hang on. <laughs> you want to go out? Here you go out. You got to go out the door, little girl. <laughs> Uh, I went went to a Promise Keepers uh, convention once in St. Louis with my uncle, who had become born again, and God, it was awful. Uh, yeesh, it's so stupid. I'm glad they're done. Yeah, you know who started it? We lost your camera, by the way, Andy. Oh. You know who started that whole Promise Keepers things was the coach of Colorado football at the time, McCarth, McCartney, McCarthy or whatever. He yeah, started it. And it was like, you know, I was like, uh, you know, it's like empowering Christian dudes. But, you know, we've seen the that was the beginning of it. Now we're seeing the end results of it. You empower Christian dudes long enough. You're going to get you a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it and it, 20 years, 10 years. If your husband needs to go to a conference out of the city to make a promise to be faithful to you, he's not being faithful to you, whether it's gay or straight. It's like, that doesn't need to be an event at the Superdome. Just just do it, you know? I wish you'd have, on some level, had a piece of the pie on Christianity. I mean, I just, I mean, like I literally, kitchen? yeah, I literally like a place, a pie place. It's spiritual pies. You come <laughs> in Sunday afternoon and I serve warm pies and cobbler to Christians. So you want a, a literal. Or just something. No, you're talking actual pie. <laughs> well, <laughs> I thought you were using it as a, as a. the first a thing I could come example. up with. That's pretty good. I was trying to think of a metaphorical <laughs> pie and I come up with pie. <laughs> literal pie. And then, and then, but I don't know, just like uh, uh, Kincaid, you know, Kincaid made these paintings and sold them to, they just fucking yeah. just press them out, fucking bullshit art. But he found that niche market with through Christianity. Uh, like, you know, Ted Nugent doesn't quite get it. Like, dude, you're not quite there. You still, like, you're, you're you know, you need to be, you're almost there. You know, <laughs> the new Christian and Ted Nugent aren't far apart, but today's Christian is more like your kid rock. You know, they see Nugent just like, fuck this dude. He's not with the new shit. I don't know. Kid rock yeah. I can't back that up. All I can say is <laughs> but Christi- Christianity is uh, like I, I, 
I don't know. Maybe it's I just didn't see it I, when I was involved with it, but it's just so fucking over the top, ridiculous. Uh, like you could, you know, it just seems like, man, I should have stuck with string art. I did it in seventh grade as a project, but I could have sold like little Christian owls or something. <laughs> yeah. Then put little Haitian kids into a factory to make the string art. Uh huh. Right? And then I talk about how I preach to them or whatever. It's like, you know, you, your audience is never yeah. going to turn on you. And and you you uh, make that company a uh, nonprofit. Yeah. So no taxes. You know, charity. It, so you don't have to pay taxes. You get caught. You don't even have putting, to be in church. You get caught putting Haitian boys in the in the uh, fucking grinder. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, nobody wanted to have sex with them anymore. <laughs> so we just churned them out of the factory, and then your audience is like, "Okay, well that makes sense. We we still b- believe in you, brother." Yeah. Shit, He's it's like right. a, it's like the the best and stupidest audience you could ever have is to be a preacher, and what mm-hmm. a you know ridiculous fucking scam that must feel like. Yeah, I did it. <clears throat> cool, mine was cooler. <clears throat> I don't know. That looks like a pretty heavy string. <laughs> I don't, I don't know the lingo. I don't know. You put nails on a board and it's like uh, paint by numbers, I think. Yeah. I gave mine to my pedophile. And that was one of the things I wondered if he still had it. But I was like, why would you know? It's like, I, you know, why would I that's, give my seventh grade art to a pedophile? That's and why the difference I, between me and you, Andy, because I still. Oh, he has it. I never had a pedophile to give mine. <laughs> you never met the right gentleman. Wow. Well, yeah. that ain't even worth giving to a dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, I mean, that's in a good way. Mine was, mine was like shit. So it's just you know, like you know, I was sparing my folks the uh, fucking uh, situation. <laughs> I feel like I insulted his string art. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I feel good about that string. Yeah, art. Yeah, no, that you must have. Were you on? Uh, is that high school? That was seventh grade, dude. The sixth oh, or man. seventh grade. You that... were already hitting the weed. <laughs> <laughs> I think I ordered that out of a TV guide. Even. That must have been a part of the curriculum at that time. It's seven. Everybody was doing it, man. Dexterity wise or something yeah. that you had to make put together a late seventies. You know. It was a thing. Keep kids busy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Was that string art? That's pretty good. <laughs> It would have been cool to make. I would, you know, that that would be interesting, you know, to try to make that with string. You art. just have to make an owl bigger to to hang over it. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, yeah. Know yeah. Well, you just got to decide if they're tits or their eyes. You know, <laughs> yeah. at some point during the string art process, Depends. you have to I mean, make a decision. Yeah. That string art nude is better than any of the uh, the scrambled porn we used to try and like uh-huh. imagine through the squiggles and the purples. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I just, I just, uh, I just went for the dialogue. At that point, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's like, good enough. Uh, yeah, because yeah. you could hear it. That's true. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I became aroused at the sl- <laughs> sound. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you call it. <laughs> hey, you're pulling a banana out of a peach sound, and I have done that. Uh, I've done that. I make sexy smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> there you go there's your christian pie make yeah smoothies yeah. for christ mm-hmm. you want your pie through what we call a glory hole <laughs> means we put you it feed out it back. to him right through the glory hole we've <laughs> got a little kneeling pad right over yeah, here yeah. in this room for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> And you want an extra whipped cream on that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Big chairs in front. You want them to sit and enjoy the pie, but you don't want them to sit too long. <laughs> well, there's got to be glory for everybody. Mm-hmm. But today's new Christians, man, I don't think it would be as rewarding. I'll bet Cracker Barrel's like going, man... What the fuck? These new Christians are breaking the big chairs in front. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, it's a clash of uh, it's a it's a real clash uh, that's coming on, and uh, and I would it would be like if I uh, I wanted to help a side, 
I would give firearms to old Christians to fight off the new Christians, <laughs> but I'm not getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If yeah. the new Christians are going to force the old Christians, you know, they're going to take their money, force them out, <clears throat> and we don't want them, <clears throat> you know. They're all fucking reamed out and molesting kids and shit. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> I didn't mean to get anti Christian. It's probably the chemotherapy drugs. <laughs> I've been watching a little bit of the Disney outrage and shit. And there's a there's like a tweet there's a tweaker woman in a vest yelling okay. yelling at you can t- it's it's I love it because it's like you can tell the lady's probably a Disney plan. Like Disney's getting their PR people, but it's just like fucking good times, man. You know, if these are indeed the end times, fucking put your hands in the air like you just don't care because it's fucking hilarious. Tweakers for Christ are yelling at people about Disney's grooming, which, oh, yeah, it does happen. Disney's, yeah, anybody watch Hannah Montana or whatever, you know, pedophiles have been on the Disney radar for a while. You know, but it's not like a a pet, you know, I got groomed. I went to America, Great America. So it's like you don't get groomed by the theme park. Great America. It was like Marriott's Great America. Oh, it was like like, theme park. I think it was Looney Tunes walked around, but not often. And I don't think they really wanted their pictures taken, neither. (laughs) Uh, But I was there, you know, to to show my sports skills to my gentlemen who, uh, you know. Uh, that's why I kind of, you know, that's why I didn't get, I got good at basketball, but only so good. Cause I got, I, I hit a, a basket to win a stuffed animal and then I got a massage. <laughs> so like, you know, I'll, I'm going to shave off a little bit of the shooting percentage and see what happens. And yeah. And it's like, I don't, that's, I don't, I think to this day, I'm not big on compliments. So I, you know, I don't say anything. <laughs> uh, uh, but i i got yeah, over complimented by it. that fuck you know it's like the most awkward hang ever and then i would I'll get these stupid compliments for don't you know oh that was just, dude it was it's like an eight footer you know? <laughs> <laughs> fucking relax man oh that's not that smart or whatever you know like, you know, it's like, that's also, I got groomed by somebody who gave me a false sense of what was amusing. You know? <laughs> I had a fucking, I had like a fucking corporate crowd to drag around this fucking boar. You know, I'm a hot <laughs> dish or whatever. And I'm hanging out with fucking an old man with nose hairs and shit that thinks a uh, fucking Monty Python is the rage. You know? <clears throat> So I got groomed at like Great America. <laughs> there was no Christian protest out front saying that. Uh, so these look, Disney uh, haters are saying that it's, it's Disney World and Disneyland. That's they don't know what they're saying. That's the thing. It's like I, I did the, the, a bit. Of, I don't know. What, was it, anyway, it was about a Special Olympics protest that they just showed up and had signs. That's what it seems like these signs are. They're just like. Fucking, they, there's a, the woman who's a tweaker in there, and she's spouting some Jesus stuff. Like, my brother Larry accepted Christ for a while. I don't know where he is with that anymore. But when he did, he was still doing meth. And he would he would give, you know, he would give fractured stories. Of, you know, it was like drunk history. Like, you know, mm-hmm. Jesus forgive everybody for what their fucking uh, shortcomings or whatever. Like, he would add, you know, spice it up or whatever. And it would be like, <laughs> you know, it would be like if you, you know, like to... Hey, I want a Bible that's just real, real easy to relate to. Like, almost stupid. <laughs> that's, that's it. And uh, that's what this lady, she's trying to explain what Disney's doing. And this woman's like, please don't shout at the ch- children. But it's just, it's it's like, it's it's like another level of Disney entertainment. You got your professional PR people and your worst customer ever. <laughs> you know, a tweaker who doesn't even, hasn't even paid admission. So you can't even throw her out. And then so they're trying like, to block it. Yeah. So it's like the people who, when they found out Pizzagate wasn't real and there was no basement in Comet Ping Pong, they had no place to go to yell about children being trafficked. And now they figured it out. Oh, it's Disney yeah, World. We can go to be, Disney it, World and yell about children. How long will it be before they're like, Disney's uh, Disney's movies are too woke. And they, you know, they need to redo. Like, they got all these characters. 
brown skin down on their luck. That just makes us white people feel like we can't be an Aladdin. <laughs> you know? Why do you know? Why do we got to get all the uh, uh, the uh, the evil prince pr- prince dudes or the Gustav or whatever, the uh, white dude? You know why? Why can't we? You know, and they'll be like, you know, that's racist for kids to have to see that. Uh, Aladdin's very racist. I think the couple that hook up aren't even white at all. <laughs> so that's completely. <laughs> You know, flaunting it in our poor white faces, our buttercreams. That's the thing, man. Uh, I'm not. I want to. You know, I want to be a part of the team, but my just. I'm not a buttercream. I don't like the whites. Uh, I like some of the music. You know, but yeah, uh, I don't like the sentiment of that we're better than anybody. I've remember the old NBA. You put the old NBA out against the worst NBA team that didn't make the playoffs. The old Boston Celtics with Bob Cousy and all the before the black guys got there. Well, that might have been Cousy was probably uh, the changeover. But if you like back in the day, you put all the white guys, the best white teams and you put them against just they get their asses kicked. So it was like, how can how can whites feel like anything other than, hey, we were we were pretty good at clogging up the system and and making it so that we could still fucking stand in front of people. But, you know. Uh, it, it's never been cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe Elvis for a minute, it felt cool. I don't know. Have you ever been like, like woke up and go, ah, damn it, I'm white. I can't believe how great <laughs> everything is. I'm fucking, I got a cool history, you know? Me and Bob, I was called Bob Cousy by my eighth grade basketball coach because I would throw the behind the back or between the legs pass <clears throat> and nobody would catch it. <laughs> it's because uh, Koozie gave points to guys who didn't make shots. <laughs> Koozie wore short shorts and passed the ball to uh, inferior teammates like me because my teammates weren't ready for the no-look pass. Well, you know what? Life is full of those. Some of you are going to be pedophiles, and some of you are going to go to jail for theft. Some of you are going to end up on logging crews. <laughs> So look for the no look, man. That's what I was trying to prepare him for. You know? That is a weird picture, Shaley. It looks like that basketball has a, a skirt and black yeah. girl legs. It was a different time uh-huh. back then. <laughs> different yeah, they equipment. played the game differently. Yeah. When they, when they put the shot clock in. They made a couple other changes too. No more dressing up the basketball. <laughs> those were uh, those were the best, the silk sh- short shorts. It was just as as close to men have ever been comfortable. And then maybe with this new enlightenment, men can wear these kind of things again. But it's just like, it's just manis or whatever. Just, yeah. you know, like, well, you can, why can't, you know, if a, if a dude, you know, is either gross or hot wearing panties at Walmart, people, you know, like shouldn't a man be able to just walk out and wear the same? Yeah. I think, I think you know. Marines wear a thing so called silkies that are uh-huh. uh, a little shorty short silk underwear that you wouldn't associate with Marines. Yeah. Well, it's like God's high up on their list. <laughs> mm-hmm. so well, we once, can't far, be too far behind. God, once Tucker you know. Carlson gets our testosterone levels back up where they're supposed to be, we'll be wearing silk shorts. So I feel like I feel stuff. like Rogan might be more like yeah, I make that pitch, you know. Like if Rogan makes that pitch and tells people to put their balls out and stuff, and then gets an <laughs> expert on there and he explains how much many more chicks he's nailing since he's been putting his ball. Like I, I definitely, I mean, I I got you know a window of opportunity with sunshine. I could give it a go or whatever, but I don't, you know, I wouldn't want it to. I, I don't think Tucker Carlson or uh, you know, anybody on, you know, it's like, you need a dude like those dudes. Go, Those dudes tell me the benefit of it. Like they lost weight, you know, they can eat faster or whatever. <laughs> Not too fast. <laughs> they can consume they ate, I can eat three weenies in five minutes. I can now. consume three mini weenies. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like that. That's, you know, that's what you want right there. Tucker Carlson is not a, uh, he's like a, uh, was or- Orville Redenbacher, <laughs> you know, Orville Redenbacher stayed in his lane and he just talked about how uh, people enjoyed popcorn. <laughs> I don't even think he really went into the kettle 
corn market much when he was alive. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. He tried yeah. to pass. Didn't he have a grandkid? He tried to make the next Orville Redenbacher, and then it, yeah, what happened to him? You know. Maybe Jared got a hold of him. Maybe, yeah, maybe he went to, maybe, you know, they took care of it in-house, unlike Penn State. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would have been an Orville Redenbacher uh, statue around uh, if, if it hadn't been for that. But, like, uh, you know, it's just a, I, I, it's, it's, I like the way it, it's, uh, it's like watching a whole group of people you don't like being trolled. But it's also scary because there are end times, fucking gun nuts and Looney Tunes. And, you you know, it's like if you had a fucking whore stepdaughter that was maybe even a little askew or you weren't. Ta- anyway, you weren't taking much of an interest in her. Uh, and then you saw her getting led down, you know, a <clears throat> path down and some dudes, you know, it's like, oh, you know, but that's what she's she's into or whatever. That's what I feel like Christians. It's like they're heading down a dangerous path and they're dumb whores. And that's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. It's just interesting. You know, I, if it is end time, they didn't, you know, add that to the thing like, Hey, hey you know, in the end times, Christianity is going to get pretty funny. It's going to, it's going to turn into to a real dark comedy cult and they're going to be capable of doing really weird shit. And justifying anything, it's kind of like the '80s Christians. It's just, I don't know. I don't know the difference. I mean, I, I was a, I was, I was in it. Some, like I said, I maybe I didn't gauge it, but it, I, I think people on that end are uh, fucking cartoonishly stupid, and uh, it's, it's hilarious. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's hard not to be. It's hard not to notice how ridiculous the stuff they have to believe is. Mm-hmm. You like, know. My uh, mother-in-law was here this week, and she's a devout Catholic, so on Good Friday, she had to go to uh, Uh Mass, but it wasn't actually Mass, it was the chanting Mass that they do. Apparently, they do like a response chant thing, Yeah, and uh, she was telling us all about it, and uh, it just, it was was mind-blowing. I was trying to ask her to, she she didn't even know what it was, really, you know what I mean? She didn't know what she was doing, and then... Here's the topper. On Thursday night, we took her out to dinner. She wanted to go to barbecue, so we went to Terry Black's Barbecue, legendary Austin barbecue. We get $150 worth of meat, and we're like, oh, we'll just have so much meat left over. You know, this will be great. We'll eat this. (laughs) And then uh, she gets up on Friday, and she's like, oh, yeah, I, I can't eat meat today. It's good Friday. No meat. And I'm like, you're fucking kidding me. We got $100. $50 Fifty dollars worth of that shit, and then I asked I asked her about that, and she also wasn't sure why the there was no uh, meat eating during Lent. Yeah, and I'm sure there's a reason, but she so, didn't know it. So maybe and that's she's, it. She's been doing this for, you know, she's eighty. She's so been maybe doing this for a long ass time. She still doesn't know. Maybe that's it. Is uh, is uh, these new ones? They just got so much more to learn. <laughs> like well, and then Disney's rubbing penises on little. Oh shit, man! The Waffle House too, and then they're out there, and then they go, "What are you out here for?" And you're like, "Oh god, election was stolen from Trump. Uh, Joe Biden's the devil. Oh shit, Disneyland's pedophiles. Uh, I can't remember. I think Christ died for somebody." <laughs> yeah, well, it's- that I just looked it up. Uh, the reason that you abstained from from meat is a sacrifice because meat was considered to be a luxury and so during lent you give up uh you sacrifice something and meat is one of them uh because it's uh to remember that jesus died on the cross so uh, it's well, also it was also to discourage cannibalism because christ <laughs> died on friday and they left him up there for a bit and it was to discourage romans from coming out and helping themselves to a little of the christ <laughs> I've done that. That's what turkey. this guy looks like he's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that looks yeah. like a well done Christ right. or, or a foot part of the ceremony. Uh, uh, I go, I eat, you know, I, I, I'm, I could see like it might be me. <laughs> Are they kissing? Uh, yeah, that does look like a weird yeah. uh, ceremony. It's a taste test buffet. You know what's so weird, Erickson, is uh, is uh, your your mother in law. That seems like such an easy thing to remember. 
Yeah, like, well, well the in. reason we give up is and there's, there's not any like some crazy pie chart or an actual pie chart, not a picture of a pie. <laughs> it's not something complicated that you have to remember. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, we sacrificed that because Jesus died on the cross. I mean, I'm a horrible Catholic uh, raised and haven't been practicing for years. I don't remember shit, but I'm I ditched it long ago. You know, my yeah. mom would remember all that stuff. Yeah, I had a family member I was talking with a while back about this, and and I remember she didn't understand the difference between Jesus and God. And I was like, oh, you got it. There's a I'm like, you fucking been doing this and you don't even understand yeah. that. That seems like the base uh, day That's, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's tricky, yeah. though, because in some ways they're the same thing. Yeah. Well, that's how you start. It's to know like it's silent fortunate. letters in the English language, trying to <laughs> yeah. teach it to someone who's like English is a second <clears throat> language. Uh, you don't say yeah. the X in xylophone. What the... Well, I think I you guess... started off talking about how like the depictions of Jesus were white, and I. Was, <clears throat> it's not, and... you know, the, that you know, if you're accurate to act, what it says, it wouldn't be. You have to picture white Jesus guy. white, because you can't imagine a brother letting him do that to him. <laughs> the white well, like, oh, well. and the brothers be like god damn it get the fuck off of me man well it's <laughs> funny that you even have to <laughs> it's funny that you'd even have to explain that to somebody seeing that i mean i'm ignorant as fuck on this but to me just on the surface i mean look at the region the story takes place in when that guy look out of place as fuck yeah. i guess maybe oh, he's yeah. supposed to i guess maybe he was out of place i guess that's the whole yeah. point he was, he was, he was deposited there chain carrying heavy ass thick motherfucker <laughs> Bible study with <laughs> and to it, like, here's it's another thing too. It's like uh, Christ had to like if you look if I had a bunch of friends and and uh, and uh, and they were gonna kill me and I just told my friends like let it go man it's all part of the thing man like you'd expect at least two or three I mean they're all up on Judas for uh, narking somebody whatever Judas didn't do that much wrong I guess but uh, anyway <laughs> but, like. Why wouldn't a couple of them double back and try to get Christ off? You know, any Western, they're going to hang somebody. Yeah. You know? But Jesus was half expected. They try to that. shoot the rope. Yeah. You know? Jesus yeah. Is expected that hammer to get, uh, what would they use? A sling, like uh, somebody, uh, a little go, uh, uh, David coming on a horse. Yeah. Well, I believe the rope. Ball, get a hatchet or... and chop this fucking cross down. Yeah. Make sure it falls backwards, by the way. And then. <laughs> yeah. When I land, get these fucking nails out That's of my That's why hands. Christians are soft-headed boobs is because they worship a guy who got, ultimately, it didn't end up, end up well. You got your hero fantasy. It happened later or whatever. But look, he let you down. He got hammered up on a cross. End of story. There's no sequel here. <laughs> they tried to milk it to another sequel and get a different guy to play Jesus, and it did not work. He didn't, they, they didn't write anything down from his time then. You know, like Jesus come back. I'll bet his new stuff is even better than his other stuff. He's on his like he ain't been canceled tour. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, and, you know, there's no uh, he didn't record so that uh, I got invited to Good Friday via a text message uh, uh, from my wife who uh, said she was going out and she said and sent me this message. Uh, by the way, I'm going out to Good Friday service. I know you're not in any condition to go. Uh, skeptic, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, she said, you know, but you, know, you can watch via Zoom. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's including you. Nice. Well, I didn't respond. <laughs> <laughs> and you ignored her. <laughs> I had about 15 responses that I deleted. And, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> but that's where we are. Uh, I did get invited. You should have said, look, I don't care. As long as dinner's ready on time. Right, what, like, you know, what, how can I even... What if, you, pay, what if you tweet out the link, Andy, and we all show up? <laughs> right, <laughs> what's that, what's that, uh, Tumor, Tumor, the Toonler, the guy who had his pants off at a Zoom meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Tubin? Tubin, I did the Jeffrey Tubin and get a, a disenfranchised. But I think they have a whole different take on the thing, so I guess it would have been, you know, but I'm not zooming into that, man. Shit. <laughs> Every day is Good Friday where I live, man. It is Austin, Texas. It's the new epicenter of life. Mm -hmm. Everything's happening in that Austin, Texas. Yeah, yeah. It's Good Friday, fucking 
waking 30 pound boxes of bolts around so it was a lot like good thursday yeah you you know there'll be a day in texas where it's fucking hot and uh and then a fire tornado's headed towards your house or whatever fire like, tornado? Well, yeah <laughs> well they got those now yeah yeah those are the new ones those are the, those are the ones you don't chase <laughs> fire twister man i wish bill paxton was still alive <laughs> I'd sit for two hours and why you know I wish they had to give uh Seymour Hoffman more to do in that movie mm-hmm. if I feel like Philip Seymour Hoffman could have fucking been the man he could have jumped up there and taken this fucking chick out of the front of that car and it could have been Bill Paxton and then Philip Seymour Hoffman leading that movie I wasn't buying the chick thing Helen Hunt? Not into Helen nobody's Hunt. in love with Helen Hunt no. you know She's a good wife. You can go to an island, come back. She's got another dude. You're cool with it. This is my guy. <laughs> you know, I lost Helen Hunt. It's a bummer. It's a bummer, but I'm going to move on and find at least the equivalent of Helen Hunt. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And it's not because of her looks. It looks like she's never having fun. Yeah, and she's Helen got, Hunt smiling. She's got pinched face. Yeah. yeah, she's got an unhappy, you know, a dramatic face. If uh, mm-hmm. she couldn't do comedy, she ain't got the well, face. She was for on it. a sitcom that was very successful uh, for a huge, huge, huge sitcom. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, it, would, it would be classified a drama I was a, comedy. I was going through my uh, uh, chemotherapy. <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> shit, and it said misogyny is a side effect. <laughs> Of chemotherapy, <laughs> weird. Like mis- you may say, misogynistic things, and now, now I totally get it. <laughs> so it's like she's, Tourette's. She's hilarious. <laughs> she was, you know, she's just yeah. Uh, with a uh, fuck, what was the name of that show? She wasn't funny in it. Mad about you. Mad about you. Mad about you. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm gonna have to revisit it. Why is no, she always squinting? Yeah, she always I feel like she should be in like context. Yeah, get get the light out of Helen's face, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a, you know, like she's as a love interest. She that's just a, it's uh, uh, you ever see uh, uh, what's his name Bronson, last name Bronson, you know Charles the action. Bronson. Charles, you ever see Charles Mon- Bronson make love in a movie? It's <laughs> like, whew, you know. The chick's probably head right from the the love scene over to fucking file a complaint. Or no, it was old Hollywood. <laughs> so they keep their mouth shut. But it's like, man, what Bronson did on screen was physically clumsy enough to constitute a sex crime. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, didn't have that energy. As a vigilante, yeah, I'm buying it. You know? I'm buying seething rage. I'm just not buying hot, lustful romance out of him. Yeah. See, and he do it. Too. A lot of Charles Bronson romance. I think. Yeah, actually, uh, it came, there's more than I thought yeah. came up. Yeah. 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 He had to do something besides beat up punk, so that you know. He'd well, I mean, have he was also a, a pretty sought after star in the '60s, '70s, and uh, '80s. Yeah. I mean, some some of that. There's also another guy, Charles Bronson, who's a, a, a hoodlum in uh, in the UK, yeah. but uh, yeah. not the same guy. I love. I have to watch some of his younger stuff. Is a uh, I just watched his vigilante phase, where it's probably like yeah. watching, watching just the last five Clint Eastwood movies to get an idea of how good <laughs> good he is as an actor or whatever. <laughs> and Clint slipped a little bit. I don't know if you saw that that last one. Drug. He was a drug smuggler in his nineties, which yeah. is like hilarious. <laughs> and uh, and he also had a, a younger love interest, which is uh, <laughs> hilarious. It's like what? What's Clint just make a movie? Yeah, and then, and then, okay, and then you come in and you just play with my balls. <laughs> this makes no sense to the story, Clint. But let's film it. I thought he was gonna quit, like after Gran Torino or something. Yeah, he did something. I thought was there an was older something movie where he made a where he made a he declaration. Probably forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lee Bruce Willis. He got out of the game while he was. Uh, while he was punchy, uh, his last performance sounded like Bon Jovi's last performance, you know, <laughs> a little, uh, you know, 
you're a cowboy, but that steel horse is breaking down a little bit. <laughs> <clears throat> well, maybe he's had yeah, a poor you know, situation. I'm sure he's tucked away some money. Oh, you think? <laughs> seeing, so. seeing how at every moment of every day, there is at least one Die Hard movie playing yeah. somewhere. I mean, yeah, he's doing all right. Yeah. Yeah, and then, I mean, it, you know, uh, there's a lot of them that get to that. I mean, uh, uh, like in the one Brendan Walsh always uses is as he just died. Uh, uh, Gene, Mike Hackman. Gene, Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman just quietly retired and lives in a community and drives around the golf cart or something. But uh, he's you know he's not posing for photos and still doing movies and shit. He just got out. <clears throat> yeah, I don't understand that. Why you have to? I mean, I understand if you're broke and stuff like that. But you know, Bruce Willis. I mean. He has aphasia and he's quitting. It's like, you probably should have quit a while ago just to fucking enjoy life. I mean, what, mm-hmm. what is the point, you know? I mean. Yeah, I know. Yeah, fucking 20 years ago. When Demi was his lady. Look, when Gene Hackman's he... last movie was Welcome to Mooseport in uh, 2004. With, uh, with Everybody Ramon. Loves Raymond, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he don't even know that he made an announcement. He just Irish goodbye acting. Fucking well done, Gene Hackman. And if Did you're it. dead, if you're dead right now before this airs, we'll jump in here on Thursday and tell Gene Hackman stories <laughs> with Junior Stopka. <laughs> Gene uh, Hackman's ninety one. So uh, uh, if Brendan Walsh keeps doing that, one night it's gonna hit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that Gene Hackman is the equivalent of my cat right now. Yeah, yeah. I see Gene so Hackman there, and then that's the end of the statement. Well, I mean, I see him, and I was like, you know, I appreciate <laughs> it, and I can respect his body of work, but I know his time is short. <laughs> All right. No, I'm showing when I show him. I've been doing my. Uh, I got my injections, so three days, and I do that, and the cats usually. The cat's pretty close to me at all times. It's uh-huh. like my security force. And I do the needle and I'm going, see, nothing to worry about. <laughs> Just getting him in tune, you know. It's like some, one of these days, man, the shot will be going into your belly. And uh, don't worry about it, man. Mr. Hackman, my cat. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, he just walked away because uh, of health issues. He just was uh, too stressed out. I, I just read that. Um, mm-hmm. Which is, I mean, that's... that's like he got that. the yips. Like, yeah, he yeah. got the yips. <laughs> or you just go, you know, I mean, there's great roles for old dudes. Yeah. Not that many of them. And then you're like, eh, you got to look and see who's in that category. And he probably uh, was just done with it. Walter Matthau, I'm glad, stuck around and did mm-hmm. a couple more things because i fucking enjoyed that dude and yeah. i thought he was great and uh those like grumpy old men or whatever yeah, yeah. Uh, fine and you know he was probably in his 80s or 90s <clears throat> yeah but it seems like he was in his 80s forever yeah. starting mm-hmm. in his 80s yeah <clears throat> so bill murray was played the his... dad in that uh grumpy old men uh <laughs> I saw an episode of Twilight Zone, an early epi- episode, and he oh, yeah. looked like he was fucking 90 then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He always was like an old soul. I mean, it was always looked, you know. Like Wilford Brimley. Did he stuff. ever have a, you know, is there, there's photos where Wilford Brimley's all young and in a football uniform, probably. <laughs> young man or whatever. But uh, I, I can't picture Wilford Brimley yeah. as anything other than Wilford Brimley aged. Yeah, goddamn Walter Matthau. The Matt. picture of Wilford Brimley probably wouldn't be in a football uniform. He'd probably be in a Confederate Army uniform. Yeah, he no meal. Southern gentleman. Hanging out with the Quaker guy. <laughs> He's dead, right? <laughs> We're not yeah. Dead. yeah. He died in, in uh, at the age of 85, but it's like his, uh, j- well, we were just talking about this because he was in a movie we were watching. Uh, they had to make him look older to be in Cocoon because he did mm-hmm. he did it so long ago. He was the only guy going into that tra- trailer. 
<laughs> Everybody else. Don, Don Amici. <laughs> yeah, Don Amici went straight from the limo to the uh, to the set. No, no makeup. <laughs> Yeah, Wilford Brimley right there, he would have been good as in the role of Mike on uh, on Breaking Bad. He's yeah. kind of a, a fat, bully, heavy. And it's felt yeah. like that was the best role for Wilford Brimley. And then and then after he kind of was in his heyday of that role, then they put him in front of oatmeal and tried to make him America's favorite old fart. <laughs> like, hey, wait, this guy gets people killed. <laughs> That's, a That's right. Burke. He did the Quaker stuff for a while. Uh huh. Yeah, he and yeah, and then and then he's the one who says diabetes wrong. <laughs> diabetes. Di- Di- diabetes. Diabetes. Yeah. He says it like ignorant people say it. Like my my mom said it. Diabetes. You mean That's the thing? My that dad t- would say stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the thing that took dad's legs? No, it's pronounced <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> Know who's you know if you can't if, if you don't know who's removing your dad your your husband's legs. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was a good you know he made he definitely made you want to you know like I wasn't an old man but I I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> what, oatmeal? Yeah. That was that was what got you to try oatmeal. It falls out of flavor with people, you know. You have it a big time in your life, and then unless you have somebody add a little bit of uh, maple to it, you may yeah. not ever have it again. And you go, wait, it can be delicious. Well, yeah, oh. if it's got sugar in it. I know you put sugar in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's how you get diabetes. When you start adding it's, sugar. it's like Sean Rouse's bit. Then you get you get cancer. Put on the sunscreen, and that causes cancer. So Wilford Brimley's promoting oatmeal caused his diabetes which gave him a whole other pitch <laughs> who saw jimmy walker coming back telling us about insurance i didn't i thought we were all done with him and especially him saying dynamite let yeah. alone pitching it to a corporation and and uh yeah. and, well i'm sure they paid uh dear oh, yeah. for, the, for saying it come on just say it just say yeah. it didn't he make one nighters pay like uh extra yeah he would have it in his he played the peoria club a bunch i say a bunch a couple times and he had a thing that in the in his contract that he would not say dynamite during the show but he sold a t-shirt that said another dynamite show jimmy jj walker for like 30 bucks after the show was over so you could buy a dynamite but you didn't get to hear one man wow and and then it wow, but you got the shirt. Mm-hmm. You, did he do a picture with the hat? I don't remember if he had the he hat. He kind of had a he had the Gilligan hat, a bucket hat. Uh huh. They call him. Man, mm-hmm. yeah, but that's why that's I think JJ's like one of the people that they invented that saying, "Don't meet your heroes." <laughs> 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 that's one of the early versions was JJ. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, he was like a funny skinny guy like Chappelle maybe that was what maybe that's why Chappelle got ripped you know Chappelle looked at what happened to JJ Walker and was like man I'm a skinny little fucking dude if I don't take care of myself I'm gonna end up looking like Jimmy JJ Walker and now Dave Chappelle is fucking cut yeah did he do like comedy specials I'd be curious to watch JJ and his Jimmy Walker in his prime yeah, I don't anything. know. I mean, he had wasn't you know, a big Letterman thing for... writing for him and George Miller writing for him. He had tons of that you know, would be wouldn't that be? Oh, something? he did one recently with oh, wow. uh, Michael Winslow called "We Are Still Here." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what you meant, Andy, when you when yeah. you wanted to see, see it. Yeah, uh, there is something on. Um, there's there used to be a show, late night uh, show, uh, for music called Midnight Special. Yeah, and there's on YouTube. There's a clip of uh, Jimmy Walker's stand up. But I mean, so you're going to get you're going to oh. get probably the dynamite and you're going to get uh-huh. very uh, milk toast because it was uh, TV. I bet he had a real set like a triple because he did like triple gigs and it, like, mm-hmm. a, a, you know, you'd see his his headshot in places you were performing in. So yeah. uh, he had yeah. something that worked in those situations because uh, Yakima and places like that, they uh 
Well, I think it's it's kind of like the 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 name recognition, like Stevo and right. uh, Dustin Diamond. You know, some just there was. To, they were guys that that you could get, you could fill seats, but you didn't really know what you were going to get. But the club owner doesn't care about that. He just right. wants to be open on a on a, a, right. a Thursday night full house. Which is why Skippy or whatever guys like yeah, that yeah. would get a run because they were like, well, you know, people are going to come out because of the TV show. Yeah, he's fucking horrible. Or whatever, maybe not JJ, but Skippy, or mm-hmm. whatever. But the only reason Skippy, he was like an uh, like a TikTok back in the day. Mm-hmm. People come out because they saw Skippy on TikTok and he was amusing. And then they meet him and he's like uh, very disappointing as a comedy act or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they got their picture taken with him. That's all they needed. So yeah. And when Skippy dies, they'll be like, Skippy, good dude, man. Saw him at Peoria, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> yep. Oh shit. <clears throat> I just started watching uh, the new season of Atlanta. Oh yeah. Just watched that show. I, I, I watched it. a bunch of it, and then I haven't. I watched one season of it. I I grabbed a a DVD I of it. That show, man. yeah. It's so good. It's so all over the place. The first episode of the new season was a trip. Because they do these episodes sometimes that don't really connect to the rest of the show in any way. It'd just be a one-off on some topic. And it would, this is what that was. And it was, uh, man, it was wild. And that's, that's on FX, right? Uh, um... Yeah, I'm watching it on Hulu. So I don't know. I think it's on FX. Uh, FX. Donald yeah. Glover's awesome. Yeah. I love that guy. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I think his name's Lakeith Stanfield. Is that his name? He plays Darius. He's one of my favorite actors. He's so uh, fucking Lakeith so Stanfield, yeah. Yeah, he's great. Whole thing's good. So highly recommend if you're out there. If you haven't checked out Atlanta yet, start at the beginning. So it's they're in their third season. Is that is that right? Yeah, this yeah I think it's their third season. They had a long. I mean, obviously COVID fucked them up. They had a long ass break. I didn't. I don't even remember what was happening from season two, but I still started on season three. So, hmm. but yeah, it's uh, it's fucking. <clears throat> uh, and Better Call Saul kicks off tonight. Yeah. Or no, not tonight. A few days ago. <laughs> I've been re- rewatching some of that. It's funny. Yeah, I'm gonna like, have to rewatch that whole thing from the start because mm-hmm. I, I I lost the the plot in that one too. At some point, I, I don't remember how far back I need to go to figure out what the fuck's going on. It's fun. It'll be fun to line up uh, Lavar Crawford and see Lavelle? Like Lavelle Crawford and go <laughs> here he is and like he here he is and this is five years into the future. Uh huh. Wait, what? Because he's like a. <laughs> He said, put on, he, I think he was like at his heaviest during Breaking Bad. And then I think he yeah. lost, he looked like he had health related weight loss. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> that part would be like a little off. But yeah, no, like it used to be like such a, a unbelievable concept that they could do a, a prequel. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and, uh huh. And it's going to fall right into place. And he's yeah, like, Odenkirk's so good. I just saw today he's getting a, uh, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah, I mean, you dude had us like you know that show gave him a whole different direction almost. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, and like he almost died. He had a heart attack. And, yeah. Uh, uh, he got it like all fucking in shape, and he's an action hero. You know, like yeah, it'd be a, 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 a that was a good movie too. Yeah, I know you challenge. guys love that movie. That movie was so fucking terrible. God, <laughs> I, that, that that, I know that was one of the best movies, and I don't know why I didn't get nominated for an Oscar, but uh, that <laughs> happens. Uh, but uh, to to be in a show and know you're even with makeup that you, you got to play like five years younger or ten years younger than you, you know, it's it's incentive to stay in shape anyway. Yeah, definitely. And uh. And and then to make that kick-ass action movie, I was like, man, I wish I had a basement I could blow up my house, <laughs> burn records and shit. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't like I I well I was telling you that about me watching the new Scream movie is I don't like stabby violence anymore. You just don't like <laughs> stupid violence, and I, I don't 
like stabby shit anymore. Yeah, I it's just I yeah, it was so dumb. Mm-hmm. Just got mad about it, and it was because my expectations were for something different. What I was thought it? it was I thought he was going to be playing more of a, a John not- McClane sort of Bruce Willis diehard character that was th- a regular guy thrown into a violent situation and having to get through it. Not a secret fucking super I, badass. And wait. his 800-year-old dad is also a fucking super secret badass who can fucking shoot. Five, he's got 500 shotgun shells loaded into his shotgun. Okay. Yeah. Now I want to watch well, this again. Get- <laughs> Such a Come good on. movie. My father-in-law, when my father-in-law was in a nursing home, he had he had that kind of stockpile in his pants. <laughs> yeah, sit there with a fucking his pants all blowed out. <laughs> yeah, it's called nobody, but you you treat it like it was called uh, uh, nobody in the power of dog. <laughs> you know i think you were expecting it to be something that wasn't right no i understand that i i didn't like it because of my own expectation but that doesn't change the fact but that i didn't like didn't it. he kind of just go around fucking with people on the wrong premise like uh, he went and beat up that couple and then he ends up beating it all of a sudden he's fucking with the russian mob and like none of this has anything to do with anything <laughs> he just wanted to commit violence which is one of the yeah, That's once he got that I really like. We see yeah. Chad's touchstone there. Yeah. And once yeah. he got turned back on, he was like a, you know, he had the switch was turned off and then mm-hmm. the candidate kind of. Yeah. 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 And you, and then, well, I'm, I don't know for sure I'd have to rewatch the movie, but wasn't there just a a hint of minority? Like he could you can't beat up a gang of all Mexicans, but you can beat up a gang that has one black guy in the gang. But you can't beat up a whole gang of black guys without it looking racist. As like that, you know, it but it would be weird to have, gang. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not many diverse gangs that ride a subway, especially <laughs> Russians, because I think they had a black one with them, or whatever. But it's like cool, they're fucking Russian in every other way, but they're not racist. <laughs> That's <Can't> cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna watch it again because I, I, yeah, gotten kind of, yeah, the well, you can enjoy yourselves, yeah, it's, we will, yeah. I mean, you don't need dialogue when the guns, you know, are taped to the fucking metal like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a chick flick for dudes. <laughs> I guess I need to watch the Tucker Carlson show and get my testosterone level yeah. back up where it's yeah. supposed to be. Is yeah, that something I, I have to watch? The, no. The t- is it no. Something- <laughs> it's just the promos are so, you know... It, if if you're gonna if you're gonna suntan your balls, do it because it feels good, not because yeah. the fucking TV told you to. Just, yeah, you know? that's what I, it seems like. Christians are just you watch know, out for fire ants. Like I don't believe Trucker Carlson's a Christian any more than I believe Donald Trump's a Christian or whatever. Yeah. I feel like they're just trolling. They're just yeah. finding yeah. ways to make oh. the news and then go. Well, you know, I'm just I'm being so ridiculous here. Uh, but I got 500,000 Christians to send me uh, $500 to go get their balls burned. Uh-huh. You know, like, like shit. It's like, you know, how could you not just keep coming up with scams for people that are uh, so stupid? Yeah. It, in this, uh, in this, you know, obvious money grab at, you know, snake oil and, you know, testosterone boosting medicines. He's talking to a guy, and they coined the phrase bromeopathic. So homeopathic <laughs> medicine for dudes is uh-huh. now bromeopathic. And that was all I needed to see. That's when I, you know, it's like, well, obviously they know it's a scam. It's just right. selling, and it's a li- you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's and, selling multivitamins. And, and wink, and, wink, it happens to be a little bromoerotic. Wink, wink, hey, oh, all right, everybody. Hey, that ain't his eye that's winking. Yeah, how many have you been to a massage party uh, for Christ before? (laughs) (laughs) Anytime anybody brings up Tucker Carlson, I'm always remember that article where uh, somebody tried to sue him for something that he said, and the judge ruled. That there was no reasonable person that would take anything that guy said seriously, and so he was not liable. 
<laughs> because it was it was clearly a joke and yeah. not to be you know yeah. couldn't be He's held not a liable. journalist. Well, yeah. the sad thing is is that what has happened, Chad, is that that judge seriously overestimated the American public. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too soon, judge. I mean, yes, no reasonable person, but we're talking about Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that yeah. judgment still stands. I mean, oh, it's there, there's I just guess. a lot of un yeah. Yeah, yeah it's truly. Weird. No reasonable. I think they're doing I like that it. with uh, with one of the gals in uh, th with the January sixth. One of the, I think the one of the lawyers uh, on the Trump team. They're they're saying that like there's no no one no one would expect her to be truthful, you know. And right. it's like what the fuck is going on here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, it's that's just a, funny that yeah. they can all get away with whatever they want by going, eh, it's just fucking around. Uh, not Alex Jones. Yeah. No. Filed bankruptcy today. Oh, nope. yes, he did. Yep. So that, that, there's a lot of that, uh, that, uh, that dumb money floating around because they can't buy his uh, bucket of food and, uh, and supplements. Uh, that's so. a great point. Tucker Carlson was like, I know exactly when I need to this drop my boy. testicle. You're going to wait to drop it. You're going to wait to drop it on the Alex Jones announcement day, and they'll just flood the ads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Romeo Pack. You did it out. <laughs> I mean, just look at this picture. I mean, I I, I used to, you I had a girlfriend who had a, uh, worked at a tanning salon in like when I was in my 20s, right? This is the opposite of what you would do. <laughs> you wouldn't selectively tan like your eyelids or mm -hmm. selectively tan your ears. I mean, wh this is so stupid. And that, that's why it's so like, there's no mm -hmm. one who would believe that this is real. Oh, all right. Well, it's an untapped. Yeah, it's untapped because you, most dudes have never really can't say they've ever had their asshole just sunburned. Like, he, you know. <laughs> Even the most vain fucking fella in a tanning bed isn't too worried about what's up under his taint. Well, so yeah. it's like, you know, you can tell people like, oh, well, it'll cure cancer if you heat your taint up. Have you ever tried it? No, I guess not. <laughs> I've never really done that, you know. It's not so how it's... the tanning bed works either. You have to sit on a fucking tanning bed that was a mm -hmm. saddle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could do it. I don't want to get in touch with these guys. I've got some ideas. I want to. I've been working on my voiceover. I want to. If I do like, uh, give your D some D, vitamin <laughs> D on your D, like I can make yeah. it sound all fucking yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get in touch yeah. with these guys. Do you believe in God? <laughs> <laughs> you better. <laughs> yes. You're gonna when you That's see this guy. Think about the. The, the Christianity thing you're talking about earlier, Andy, is that more fucked up your life is when you decide to just go, fuck it, I'll switch to that marketing angle. Mm -hmm. As the, all the fucked up stuff you did, that just makes you a better mm -hmm. case, you know, case study. So it works in your favor. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like yeah. Politic, political ads We'll switch this to a easy. Christian podcast whenever it's fucking done, run its course. Yeah. Of what you it want to be mayor? We get more merch. We <laughs> start making some cash. <laughs> yeah, we'll get. Let's get uh, Chad into office. He's. You got a four wheeler. You got a gun. You got your hat on backwards. You got your uh -huh. voice. You talk. Uh, you shame. Some, you make fun of liberals and shoot off that gun. And we'll get you some. Uh, you know, we'll get up in office. We can do a podcast from wherever. We'll set it up on the courtyard. That actually is not a terrible idea. I know. There's Except ads Chad like that. having to be in, in office. Yeah. He's he's such a regular guy. He doesn't even want to do this. I can't, <laughs> I, I can't get a regular job because I'll murder somebody. And you want me to go and well, you, yeah, he died at the Christmas tree lot. Remember? Yeah, he lasted yeah. a while. Chad's uh, Chad's they first uh, back, Chad's bet. first business call. <laughs> Hi, freeze pipes. Uh, I don't know if you heard. I'm uh, the governor. <laughs> And sit back. I'd rather have like a governor like Chad, not you know, doing whatever Chad sees fit to do, rather than some other asshole who wants to do what they want to do. That's my endorsement. I, I agree with that. I'd move to the state, and uh, you know, as Chad, smart it's freedom. Enough to find smart people to do everything that I don't have know how to do, which is everything. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. They get the Christian. I'll go to churches and start recruiting Christians to our cult. Uh huh. I want some Christians who are ready to fucking catapult for Christ. 
it's not enough. It's not enough. No, no, Larry, it's not enough that you just dance on the ground. Christ compels you to get on the catapult. <laughs> and then, you know, vote for Chad shirt. <laughs> God damn it. These are all good ideas, fellas. Yeah. All good ideas. All right. There you see started. the freezepipe.com right there. If you go to freezepipe.com and enter the promo code Andy, A N D Y, you will get 10% off your purchase. I mean, what that, what a deal. So, uh, yeah, check them out. They got all kinds of great stuff, and you've seen it here on, uh, on the Issues with Andy show. This. You couldn't ask for uh, a, a better testimonial than the, you see him working during the show and uh, the no coughing and the smooth hits. It's just nothing better. So uh, go check him out at freezepipe.com. And uh, what else is happening out there? Andy's uh, uh, Venmo is uh, Andy Dash Andrus. You can uh, hit him up. That part is uh, dead. Uh, some goodies. He'll send you some stickers. It's a whole sort yeah. of symbiotic relationship. Sticker business has been good. Yeah, right on, man. I've been selling mm. enough to drag me up a day a week to go to the post office. <laughs> and uh, someone asked me to sign some stickers, so I cut open that and and dumped it out and signed them. Wait, for everyone or just that well no it's just that one okay it was like already sealed up but that's how oh, like okay. you know like i'm on i i this is the factory floor <laughs> <laughs> so i can do all that shit you hit the stop button on the yeah. Press. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. yeah that's a good thing i stayed in bed for two days and didn't mail these <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah take your time with it man take your time people understand and uh, I know I saw a new setup for the uh, Twitch stream, so it looks like we got some cool shit going on there, right? Yeah, I read, uh, I, I recorded some, like, practicing reading audiobooks. I read some Hemingway, which uh, the, nice. the, the one I read turned out to be kind of like a story about him raping somebody. So I was real confused <laughs> and, uh, about that, I think. Maybe I either misunderstood it or he was glorifying, like, a date rape. So I'm... Off the pre-read stuff, I guess. So I don't get kicked men off were men. That, that yeah. was a re there was a reason read he ate a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> but but I read a little Dracula, Bram Stoker. I'm just reading oh, off nice. uh, Project Gutenberg has like public stuff that you won't get in trouble for reading. So I'm just oh, like a public yeah. domain. Yeah. yeah. So you're doing like story time with Chad? Yeah. Ah, awesome. uh -huh, that's badass. Yeah, right. head over like... head over to his Twitter, uh, HD Fatty. The, the the instructions are right there, and it's free. Yeah, very, very good. And uh, I have another podcast with my good friend, William Montgomery. We're on YouTube at the William Montgomery Show. Uh, we've got uh, we've had a lot of fun over there. So go check that out. And That's on Wednesdays, right? Right after Mad Wednesday About You? Wednesday night comes right on after uh, Paul Reiser and Helen Hunt's very popular <laughs> Mad About You. Uh, the, I love that Helen Hunt. must see TV. Great lead-in, dude. You guys are lucky. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah, it. And, uh, yeah, we got Jeremiah Watkins coming in for a guest uh, uh -huh. next week. So that's going to be a lot of fun. He's coming into town from Moon Tower. So uh, that guy's great. So, uh, yeah, check out the William Montgomery Show on YouTube. And our uh, buddy John Norris, who I do a podcast with uh, John Norris and uh, Matt Collins out in Alaska. Uh, John Norris just had uh, him and his lovely wife, Stephanie, just had a baby boy. Oh, oh so that's why we've been Congrats. holding off on uh, doing more episodes of Mixtape Time Machine. But those are uh, coming up. He's copying Matt Collins again. Again, yeah. Tough to follow. Jeez. All right. Well, good for him. Congratulations, John Norris. Um, all right. That's it. We love you guys. Thanks for being out there. And uh, if you are not a member of our Patreon, uh, please, please join. Because uh, you'll get extra cool stuff on Patreon. You saw, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you already know. We put out a short little <laughs> yeah. Patreon episode on uh, Easter Sunday where we talk to our good friend Junior Stopka. We're going to do some more of that stuff where we bring in a fifth. And, but not the uh, one that we wanted. It was basically a full episode. I mean, it was basically a full episode. Yeah, with yeah. a theme, running theme. Yeah. I'm excited so, uh, about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. <laughs> 
So, yeah. uh, so, so we'll be doing that some more. So uh, head on over to uh, Patreon slash Issues with Andy and uh, sign up five dollars a month, and uh, you'll get all of this stuff and all the extra stuff too, right there on Patreon. And audio, uh, the audio only version of the podcast is on Patreon uh, every episode as well. So. If not, if you just want to do the YouTube thing with us, that's fine. But please like and subscribe and uh, share it if you want uh, so we can get a few more people watching. And uh, Chad can get a few more freeze pipes when he inevitably breaks this next one. So, uh, all right, cool. We love you guys. Thanks for being out there. We'll see you next time. Peace. And it's there. All right, we've just lost the international satellite. The broadcast is over. We're going to the national affiliates and take it away.